So this will be part 42 of our Fleet MS version 2 and it's going to be really interesting and we are going to be talking about form validation. So I've made a list of items we are going to be covering under form validation. There are about six of them. One, HTML form validation, required field validation for drop-down lists. This for drop-down lists, take note. Now we have regular expression validation. We are going to be covering a bit of regular expression. And then we are going to be talking about JavaScript validation and data list tag. So I'd like to take this a bit uh, quick so that maybe you can now spend time to figure them out uh, by trying some examples. So let's go take an example here. So if I go to my application and go to suppliers, for instance, and, and try to add a new supplier, and I, let's say, fill in all this and then submit, you'll see that it actually will throw up an error. So if I save, you see that there's an error that comes up here. If I go to the, uh, to the, to the error log here, you can see it says field error in supplier field, country ID rejected value select. So because we did not select anything, so uh, that means uh, the, the entry is not valid. So there are two things we can do. We can either add a required field or we can allow it to select null. So in this case, now we have state and country. So let's come here. So one thing we can do is to say that th value here is equal to, it can now be a null value. So it's, oh, sorry, one second. th value is equal to, it should be dollar sign and null. So in this case, it's going to accept null values, okay? And what it means is that when you enter some data uh, in the form without entering the values of the dropdown, then um, uh, null values will be submitted to the database and that should be, that is also okay. So if I run this application now, you'll see that it will work and it's going to accept null values, okay? So if I go back to my application now and maybe refresh and then we enter everything back again and then submit, it's going to work even though we've not selected anything. So that's one. Actually, that is not really uh, actually much of validation. So I assume we want this field to be required. So one thing we can do is in the select list here, we are going to simply add required. So if we add required in the select list, it means that we'll be forced to select enter an item here. So let's just try it. I don't really know if it will work. Again, this is part 42 of a complete course on um, building application using different technologies. So if you have if the, the first time you're joining, please consider subscribing and also maybe go back to continue from the beginning of the class. So I'm going to stop and rerun. And in this case, we expect it to um, be required. So in this case, if we don't select anything, it's going to uh, it's going to complain. So you can see now when I try to submit, it's complaining. So if I select here and still try to submit, uh, it also throws an error. So this case is actually about required field. So do the same thing for the second one. So in this case, I didn't add any any required field right here. Okay, so let's look at another aspect of validation. So let's go back to the list. We have this other basic validation, for instance, required min length and max length. So if you want a text to be between certain lengths, uh, maybe the name should be three letters, between three and 10 letters, you specify the min length and max length. But if it's a number and you want people to enter their age, you can enter, let's say, you want to set age from one to 100 because uh, people you don't expect to be having the uh, age of 1000 years or something so you can actually specify mean and max for numbers mean length and max length for text okay so you can try this out yourself i'm not going to be doing this with you now this is very very important regular expressions now regular expression is very uh, wide topic very um, um uh, it covers a lot However, I'm going to just show you the basics and then you can actually understand it from there. So if you want a string entered in a box to match certain pattern, you can specify it. So let me start with this. Uh, let me start with this. So if you want only one item, you can either actually enter it. So let's go back to our form. So let's say we are entering here and we want the website to be just one, one website for maybe the companies. You want them to have only this this one website. 
you can actually specify in a specified in a pattern so when an entry is made that is not equal to that website it's going to throw an error so if i go to the website let's see the website uh here so this is the input for the website you can simply say pattern is equal to unspecified titan the genius Dot com. So in this case, anything that is not kindsonthegenius.com is not going to work. So in this case, I'm going to uh, rerun this application here. And if I go enter something that is not kindsonthegenius, okay, still restarting. Let me refresh and go here and try to save. And then this does not work. So I'm going to select and try to save. Okay, so we have a challenge with suppliers. I've not corrected it. So if I come here and say in the website, for instance, I enter something else and try to submit, you see it doesn't allow me it because the pattern does not match. So that is one thing you want to have in mind. This is about, um, you want to force the user to enter something. So let's say you want it in a state, there are only three cities you want to allow. You can use the, um, the bar like, like this, let me say like this. So let's say we have two cities called Olu and Uzi. Uh, so, and this is the only two cities we want them to select. So if I go down to the cities, I can actually specify them using a regular expression. So let's go to the cities now. So these are the cities and I can just say the pattern is equal to, um, I use a bar and say Uzi. And in this case, if anything that is entered is not within these two cities, then it's going to throw. It's going. It's not going to allow us. Um, it's not going to allow us. Okay. So permit me to just check where the challenge is coming from. Okay. So I'm going to run this application now. And this is regular expression we are talking about. Okay. So if I now go back to refresh this page and I try to save, it doesn't allow me. So I'm going to select something here, select something here. And of course I can just select the correct one here. But we want to check that the city is correct. So if I, if I allow Budapest here, you are going to see that it's not going to allow us because we only have two cities specified there. So you play around with it and there are other regular expressions you can specify. Let's assume now that you want a pattern to be A, B, followed by any number of, uh, this is star here means zero or more, plus here means one or more. So I think this should be intuitive. So you try to figure it out because I'm not going to continue here. So we also have JavaScript uh, regular expression. So in this case, you need to write a bit of a script code. And in this case, I'm not going to be talking more about this at this time. So this is another thing you can do. This is not actually regular expression, but if you want an input item to have a list that users can be able to have selected from, this is not a drop down list we are talking about. So this is just an input, a text field, just like I have two, two cities I want to specify. But in this case, you can now specify a number of things and is also going to be of what the user can choose from. Um, so this is the much I can take for now, except that if I go back here, um, I'll, I'll like to recommend, please take some time to, to figure out how this works. Okay, then we have date. So some regular expressions are kind of inbuilt. So if you, if you have a date field, like in this case, we can have, you can say the type is equal to date. So you can say type, no, this is the label. So you can say input. Okay, you have type is equal to email, but in case if you want a date, you can say type is equal to date. And there are many other things you can use. We have hidden, we have password, we have radio, and we have a whole lot of things you can use. So you play around with them. And these are about regular expressions. I'm going to be stopping here. I'm not going to go deep into regular expressions, but I think I've given you the basic you need to be able to understand um, uh, basic validation for now and yeah so the next class now will be an interesting one we are going to be talking about attaching a react ui the last time we atta attached an angular ui and fetch data using angular so in the class in the next class which is 43 we are now going to attach a react ui and we continue from there so i'm going to be stopping here 
Uh, remember to subscribe if you have challenges please let me know in the comment box below if you have something you would like me to add to this list of tutorials because we are actually rounding off gradually please also let me know i will update my list i remain kind on the tech pro and i'm always there for you